Hey. Hi, honey. How was your day? How did the candidate go on the interview? Do you think it'll be good for your organization? Holy hell, talk about dress to impress. Who's gonna be there? Chris Emsworth? You know it's Amy's birthday. Drinks with the girls. Oh, uh, she's gonna be here in 10 minutes. I'm having a drink, are you? Yeah. And to answer your question, yes. I think he'll be good. Which reminds me, have you thought more about joining us? AFM could really use your help. I have thought more about it. And I still want to be an actress. It's what I've always wanted to do ever since that first school play when I was seven. And you know I've done well on my acting courses. Last time we spoke about it, you made me feel guilty for not wanting to join your charity. But over the last couple of months, I've been doing a lot of reading and thinking, and I think I know what's behind all of this. <laughs> you mean you've been brainwashed by the fascist... What's her name? Ayn Rand nonsense. So Mussolini banned We the Living because she was fascist? You haven't even read her stuff. Nonsense is what I have to read in my philosophy course. Well, apart from Aristotle. Last time we spoke about me joining your charity, you said it was selfish of me to want to do my own thing, and that made me feel ashamed. Yes, that's because you know there are lots of people out there who need your help, and you should give it to them. I've told you about the poor lost souls sleeping out, and you have a moral obligation to help them. Well, I'd be quite happy to give some money to charity, but why should I dedicate my life to helping them? Why? Should I choose a career for the sake of others? Well, come on, everyone knows if you want to feel fulfilled in life, you have to do something with your life that's moral. If you hadn't spent so much time in high school dreaming about being a movie star, you would have learned an important lesson. The moral path is the life of a Mother Teresa who devoted herself to those in need. If your horse were any higher, you'd have trouble hearing me, which is probably what you want. But you still haven't told me why. Why is selfless devotion to others the standard of what's moral? Why are the halos reserved for nuns and charity workers? If you even have to ask... Hell, don't you know right from wrong? The alternative to morality is selfishness. Attila the Hun and that crook Bernie Madoff. <laughs> so according to you, there's either Mother Teresa or Attila the Hun and Bernie Madoff. You either sacrifice for others or sacrifice others for yourself? Well, I'm against sacrifice, full stop. Okay, so you're claiming the Pope is not only fallible, but completely wrong. Yes. There's another option which doesn't involve any sacrifice. Why isn't it the moral course to lead a principled life? To carefully choose a career, to study hard, and then to strive ethically to achieve the highest in your work. To be honest, respectful, and loving in your marriage. To conscientiously rear your children to be happy and successful. You know, in Ayn Rand's amazing novel, Atlas Shrugged, there's this industrialist, Hank Reardon, who's worked his way up from laborer to mine owner and steel producer. He struggled for 10 years to invent a new metal. I just read it again. Here it is. The night spent at scorching ovens in the research laboratory of the mills. The meals interrupted and abandoned at the sudden flash of a new thought. A thought to be pursued at once, to be tried, to be tested, to be worked on for months, and to be discarded as another failure. The one thought held immovable across a span of ten years. The thought of a metal alloy that would do more than steel had ever done. The acts of driving himself through the ringing torture of still not good enough and then going on with no motor save the conviction that it could be done. And then the day it was done, and the result was called Reardon Metal. It's people like this we should admire, people with vision and determination who have improved all of our lives. But a selfish concern for your own interests is not the moral ideal. Remember, we're our brothers keepers. We need a morality to direct us to look after those in need. I know we're told that stuff growing up, but it doesn't make any sense. Actually, we need a morality to help us make the right choices to be successful and happy. Unlike an animal, we don't have automatic knowledge for survival. We have what about our instincts for self-preservation? Well, knowing you want to live is not knowing how to live. You need to choose the right goals and the right way to achieve them. Morality is a guide to help us achieve sustainable happiness. I mean, moral principles prevent us from straying into self-destructiveness and remind us to choose the path that's best for us long-term. For example, Honesty stops you from damaging your reputation by lying or by throwing away your education by cheating on an exam. Integrity prevents you from harming a good relationship by cheating on your girlfriend or by not being there for a friend in trouble. 
Justice motivates you to speak out against a popular peer who's actually a spiteful liar and a bully. And rationality and independence stop you from trying a dangerous pill you're being pressured to take. Morality has to be about the self, about doing the right thing by ourselves. It's about achievement of values, not about giving them away. You know, there's no place for self-sacrifice and a proper morality. In Atlas Shrugged, Ayn Rand advocates seven virtues, which actually make a lot of sense. There's justice. But if people are only guided by their own egos, they'll trample all over others just to get their own way. It'll be survival of the fittest, and the weak can go to hell. No! How is that in your long-term interest? Your marriage won't last long if that's how you behave. And look at Bernie Madoff, in jail and his son committed suicide. If you trample all over your friends, you'll end up with none. And ignoring other drivers on the road is a ticket to the to jail or the mortuary. Didn't your parents ever teach you to be selfless? My parents were dedicated to being the best parents they could be. Their primary focus was me. So why wouldn't it be right to continue their work and try and make the best life that I can for myself? This allegedly logical code of ethics is only for the strong. They can then callously ignore the weak and the needy. Yours is the morality of, let them eat cake. How would the weak even survive, let alone be happy? If you'd used that tone of voice with me on our first date, it would also have been our last date. There are people out there working with no legs or arms. There's Stephen Hawking. With the technology we have now, you have to be practically dead to be unable to support yourself. So if a person can't work, you'll just let them starve in the streets? You of all people know there are charities out there to help them, just as there were an abundance of charities in the 19th century when capitalism in the West was at its peak. So if a person loses their job, or their house burns down, or their child gets cancer, you'll do nothing. In the 19th century, there was also mutual help societies where everyone paid a regular amount, like insurance, so if someone fell on hard times, there was money to help them. This selfish way of life leads to a system where cigar-smoking bosses drink champagne while their workers risk injury and death in dangerous furred wolf factories for a dollar a day. Is that what you want? Stop using that four-letter word beginning with M and ending with X. Look what capitalism has achieved for us in the West. Do you remember that diary my mother has, the ancestor who lived in the early 1700s? Well, before her husband died, they were quite well off, but she still buried four of her children before they reached their 10th birthday. And then after her husband died, they all lived in one room. She spent every hour of daylight sewing so she could put food on the table. And even then, it was just some bread and potato. Before the Industrial Revolution, at least a quarter of England's population was on the bread line just a piece of bread a day. And then when there was work in the factories set up by entrepreneurs, your cigar smoking, champagne drinking capitalists, the living standards of even the poor soared throughout the 19th century. You mean those factories where children worked 14 hour days? The children were worse off before the factories. Backbreaking work in the fields from sunup to sundown, the factories brought better wages and cheaper goods so eventually parents could afford for their kids not to work. And now anyone can live better than even the upper class did back then. And this will happen in the poorer countries if business is allowed to flourish. Look at Hong Kong and India and China. If you want better living standards for poor Africans and Asians, then rational self-interest is the morality to promote. It's also what's brought us so many inventions. I mean, refrigeration, running water, the washing machine, sewage disposal, technology to lower the cost of living and give us shorter working hours, and life-saving medical advances to name just a few. This is all just rationalization. You want to live selfishly, and this is how you justify ignoring your obligation to help the needy. Maybe for a split nanosecond, you could entertain the idea that you may be wrong on this fundamental issue. You need to forget your childhood brainwashing and see the creed of selflessness for the nonsense that it is. Can't you see how people use it to make others feel guilty? To manipulate them? Case in point, you. You need a morality that's fit for purpose, namely rational self-interest. I have no trouble seeing acting as a moral choice. Hopefully, Chris Hemsworth will be there. 